click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends and today we are going to study a last numerical that is problem number 6 on convolution theorem. So we first of all we will see the question and then later on we will move on to solution. Problem number 6. Obtain z transform of x1 of n and x2 of n using linear convolution and the x1 of n is given that is 1 0 1 and x2 of n is given that is 2 1 2. Now look at here in x1 of n the sample is or you can say the arrow is given or mentioned on the leftmost bit. So we have the origin but on leftmost bit. So remaining rest of the samples which is on right hand side having a or you can say having a positive sequence. Now look at it in x2 of n the origin or arrow is present or marked perfectly at the center. So we have one negative sample sequence and one positive sample sequence. Now we will solve the question. Now what we are going to find out we are going to find out a linear convolution of these two sequences using z transform but before moving to definition or before moving to convolution you should know the property statement of convolution using a z transform. The convolution of any two sequence, any two discrete sequence or any two continuous time sequence. Basically, Z-transform is used for discrete sample. That's why I'm right now I'm telling you the convolution of any two discrete sequence. Now, the definition is convolution of any two discrete sequence is nothing but the product of individual sequence. Or you can say the product of Z-transform of individual sequence. Now, look at here. The convolution of x2 of n and x2 of n when we transform this whole part into z domain then it is nothing but it is the product of z transform of two sequences. So first of all we have to find out x1 of z and x2 of z. Now we will first of all calculate x1 of z using x1 of n and then we we'll later on we will calculate x2 of n that is x2 of z. Now first of all we will calculate x1 of z using x1 of n and x2 of z using x2 of n. Now, for to get x1 of z, we will apply definition of z transform on x1 of n. z transform x1 of n is represented by x1 of z. Now, the definition is summation n value r is from minus infinity to infinity x1 of n into z to the power minus n. Now, look at here. Basically, our sample is available from 0 to 2. That is, look at here. We have the arrow which is marked on leftmost bit. So we can say that the rightmost bit is having positive sequence or you can say a rightmost side we have a positive sequence. Now this sequence started from 0 and it will be up to a 2. So that's why we are going to change the summation limit from 0 to 2 because rest of the case like when your n value is not equals to 0 to 2 then our x of n is having amplitude 0. That's why we are going to replace the summation value from 0 to 2. Now, just break the summation and substitute the values of n from 0 to 2 in this whole part. Now, our x of n is 1, 0, 1. These are the amplitudes and the sequence is this. Now, if I break this summation, which means I am going to place the n value from 0 to 2. What I said, if I break this summation, then all the values of n replaced by 0 to 2. Or you can say that, just substitute n values from 0 to 2 in these two parts. So first of all, I will substitute 0. So this z to the power we have 0 and anything raised to 0 is always 1. So I am not going to write that value. Now, basically we have a positive sequence. The order of z will be a negative now substitute the values of x1 of n or you can say x1 of 0, x1 of 1 and x2 of 2 in this equation. So x1 of 0 value is 1. x1 of 0 means x1 of n value at n equals to 0. At n equals to 0 this function is having amplitude 1. So I am going to write here 1. Next x1 of n means x1 of 1 means the x of n at n equals to 1 is having amplitude 0. And x1 of 2 that is this sample value I am going to place over here. Now just do the multiplication. What you will get? 
this is our x1 of z and i'll mark this one as equation number 2 now we will calculate x2 of z now we will apply z transform of x2 of n to find out x2 of z and the definition will be is summation value where n varies from minus n to infinity x2 of n into z to the power minus n now basically as i said our n value is available from minus 1 to 1 so this summation limit also changes to from minus 1 to 1 now break this summation value how to break it just substitute values of n from minus 1 to 1 in this equation now if our sequence is negative then order of z is positive if our sequence is positive then order of z is always negative here we have n equals to 0 so if this n is replaced by 0 then anything raised to 0 is always 1 that's why i have not written here z value now substitute the values of x2 of minus 1 x2 of 0 and x2 of 1 in this equation x2 of minus 1 value is 2 x of 0 value is 1 and x2 of 2 1 value is 2 and this is nothing but our equation number 3 and this is the result of x2 of z and the result is 2z plus 1 plus 2z inverse now what is the next step just substitute values of equation number 2 and equation number 3 in equation number 1 to get the convolution result now i have substituted the values of x1 of z and x2 of z in my equation number 1 and this is the result now simply do just multiplication so 1 into whole equation remains same so 1 into 2z is nothing but 2z 1 into 1 is 1 and 2z inverse into 1 is 2z inverse so i'm going to write this whole bracket as it is now z raised to minus 2 if z raised to minus 2 is multiplied with z to the power positive powers then order of z the result and order of z will be decreased and if the z to the power minus and z to the power minus if the same power multiplied with each other then order will be increased so z minus 2 into 2 z here the order is 1 so this order will be decreased by 1 the answer is minus 1 now here 1 into z to the power minus 2 is z to the power minus 2 the last z to the power minus 2 and z to the power minus 1 as i said if the orders are same then value will be increased so minus 2 and minus 1 will give us a minus 3 now just add the similar values or you can say the same coefficient values now here we have a z to the power 1 so just check here in the rest of the equation do we have a z to the power 1 answer is no so we'll write this value as it is next we have only one that is z to the power 0 values here only we have single and the rest of the equation it is not there so we will write only one now look at here just compare z inverse coefficient here z inverse coefficient is 2 here also 2 so answer is 4 and the rest of the case here the coefficients are not there only two terms is here so we will write it and this is nothing but the answer of convolution theorem basically we can do the perf convolution but in another way now the new technique i am going to tell you this technique is used in higher semesters now how to use that i will show you there are different ways to find out convolution first one is graphical method second one this is the graphical method you can say second one is tabular method that i'm going to show you and last one is circular method now i'll show you how to use the tabular method now you can write your x of n values here also or here also basically i'm going to write x1 of n value over here and x2 of n value over here now just multiply this one with all row element similarly with this one also and one will be multiplied with this whatever result will come i'll write it over here now just mark the cross rows now what is the next technique what you have to do just add the element which are present in that diagonal rows so here we have only two so i'm going to write here two now here we have zero plus one is answer is one now two plus two answer is four 1 in plus 0 answer is 1 and the last one we have 2 now how to identify the origin value now in x2 of n our origin was present perfectly at the center and in x1 of n the origin was 
marked on first value now just check here just do one thing just check the intersection of these two arrows the two arrows intersect in the second diagonal row so whatever result will be there in the second diagonal row which is nothing but our origin value so this is the way to find out the sequence now just compare this equation with our obtained result if this is our origin value then this will be the sequence of minus one and these are the orders or next sequence positive sequence so look at here z to the power here the n value is minus one so z to the power we have one and the coefficient of z to one is two look at it here also we have two origin we have one and the next coefficients are four one two four one two well so this is the another technique to find out the convolution theorem but this technique is going to be used in higher semesters but for time sake just consider this one or just go through it so that if this question asks for 5 marks then you can do this one also but most of the time this equation or this question is asked for 10 marks so perform this graphical approach always thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ikeda and subscribe ikeda thank you so much